gods forgive me. How's it going everybody? It's Eeyong here with my analysis of Final Fantasy XV's Omen trailer that Square Enix dropped recently. Now before we proceed I must warn you that this analysis contains spoilers for Kingsglaive and Brotherhood Final Fantasy XV. So if that's a big deal for you, definitely watch those first and then come back. I'll also be talking about what the trailer could be telling us as far as plot and story is concerned, so if you're the kind of person who doesn't even want to hear theories of what could happen in the game, I would go ahead and skip this video, but if you're interested in discussing possible interpretations for the scenes shown in this awesome new trailer, then welcome and I hope you enjoyed this video. There is a lot to talk about, so without further ado, let's dive right into it. Something to keep in mind is that what you're seeing here is a premonition or omen that King Regis is being shown of his son Noctis, so don't take everything you see here too literally. Shit gets really weird and dreamlike in this trailer, but like with any premonition, I think interpretation plays a key role. The trailer begins as Noctis pulls up at a gas station to refuel his car. Nothing unusual. The camera then shifts to a bird's eye view of the scene where we are shown a better look at the setting. And it's just one of those typical gas stations you'll find scattered throughout the world. But this location is not to be confused with the Hammerhead gas station and car repair shop run by Sid and Cindy, which is a little more extravagant than this. Moving on, as Noctis heads into the building, the scene seamlessly shifts into a rather fancy room. Books litter the shelves in the back, and in front of Noctis is what looks to be Luna's room. As Noctis looks around, he spots a number of things, starting with these two portraits directly above the two beds. Both of these portraits are actually concept artwork of the game. The one on the left shows King Regis holding his son in his arms, a scene that we got to see in action in the game's Dawn trailer. And the one on the right depicts Luna and Noctis as childhood friends with their two dogs, Umbra and Prina. All we know about these dogs is that they're both owned by Luna and are described to be faithful servants. And from what I've seen, they will act as sort of a bridge between Noctis and Luna when the two are apart. Overall, expect the two dogs to provide help in their own way. Something else that I noticed about this artwork is that Noctis has bandages wrapped around his right arm. This indicates that the artwork we're looking at here happened shortly after Noctis was attacked by a Merilith, which resulted in the death of a woman who was rumored to be his mother, and this also resulted in Noctis' injury. In Brotherhood Episode 5, you can actually see servants quickly tending to Noctis' wound and applying the very bandages we see in the portrait. So whatever scene this portrait depicts likely happens during Noctis' recovery from the traumatic event. We are eventually shown a wide-angle shot of Luna's room, where we can spot a number of other furniture and decorations neatly arranged throughout, most notable of which is this mannequin dressed in what I can only assume to be Luna's wedding dress. The way it's standing there untouched by its lonesome seems to be a premonition of how the politically motivated wedding between Noctis and Luna will not be carried out as planned, which is exactly what happens in Final Fantasy XV after the Niflheim Empire executes an all-out assault against the Kingdom of Lucis in the opening hours of the game while Noctis is making his way to the wedding, ruining that event. And overall, one look at this shot, and it's clear that there's a thick air of foreboding permeating throughout this scene. Little details like the tipped over sofa chair and the stormy clouds thundering outside the window gives off the sense that something is not quite right. The words, there's a storm coming, feel rather appropriate in this situation. This is a stark contrast from when the same room is shown in Final Fantasy XV's Reclaim Your Throne trailer, where we see young Noctis and Luna joyfully conversing, while Umbra and Prina peacefully rest on the floor. It's quite apparent that this room holds many fond childhood memories for Noctis, but the way it's depicted in the Omen trailer seems to foretell that a dark future lies ahead for both Noctis and Luna. Before we move on, one last thing I would like to analyze in this scene is the ominous dialogue spoken by the voice of a child. The voice says, To crown the king of light is the calling of a crystal. Only the true king, anointed by the crystal, can purge all star of its scourge. The voice is likely referring to how only the chosen king can wield the Ring of Lucy, which allows its user to draw power and wisdom from past kings of Lucis and to channel the power of Insomnia's crystal. We saw what happened when someone who wasn't worthy tried to wear the ring in Kingsglaive Final Fantasy XV. Didn't go so well. 
even in the case of Nyx Ulrich from Kingsglaive, whose good intentions swayed the spirits of past kings residing in the ring to temporarily grant him power, he still wasn't the true king, and as a result, borrowing this power came at a great sacrifice, one Nyx was willing to take. So it's up to the crystal and the ring of Lucy that channels its power to decide who the true king is, and according to the dialogue in this omen, only this king anointed by the crystal can purge the scourge, whatever that may be referring to. The true king in this case is most likely referring to Noctis. The trailer then transitions to this next shot where we see Noctis driving through the road without a care in the world while Niflheim airships loom in the distance, which eventually proceed to attack Noctis. As Noctis zooms by, a ghostly figure of Luna appears on the side of the road, giving off the sense that she's watching over and looking out for him. As Noctis keeps driving, he eventually notices a dog ominously standing to the right, and as the camera zooms in, it becomes apparent that this is none other than Prina, who has grown up to become a cuddly white doge. Apart from its appearance, another way to tell this is Prina is the green cloth wrapped around its right foreleg, which can also be seen in episode 2 of Brotherhood Final Fantasy XV. Then, Noctis, who doesn't seem to have the common sense to look at the road when driving at like 200 miles per hour, makes a sudden swerve and completely totals his car and himself. He kind of deserves it. While that's happening, you can see Prina the Doge watching this entire thing unfold, probably thinking to itself, what a dumbass. The trailer then flashes and takes us to a really dark scene, showing us Luna pinned on the floor, struggling against an unknown enemy. She then yells, Noctis and we see a rather familiar looking sword strike where Luna's head would have been had she not dodged. The struggle ensues, but Luna is clearly outmatched and overpowered. And right here, not only can we see all the flames engulfing the area, it's also possible to make out the silhouette of none other than Noctis himself. We'll see more of this scene later, so I'll come back to this once the whole thing unfolds. The trailer then flashes back to Noctis after the car crash, who looks upon the doge to realize that it wants Noctis to follow. We can also see that Niflheim's forces have laid waste to the surrounding area, as is apparent by all the fire and smoke. This part of Regis's omen is likely foreshadowing the Niflheim Empire's impending conquest against the Kingdom of Lucis as well as all the other nations. The scene then immediately transitions to this desert setting where we see sailing boats strewn about as if the sea had all of a sudden dried up. If we go just a little further into this shot, it's possible to see this majestic structure that many of you may recognize from the country of Accordo, except we are now seeing a ravaged, decayed version of the once lush and beautiful nation. This part of King Regis's omen seems to suggest that calamity will befall on Accordo, and we do actually get to see hints of this in other Final Fantasy XV trailers, where we see Noctis and crew caught up in the middle of the Niflheim Empire forces, as well as a really pissed off Leviathan. One smaller detail I would like to note is that the ransacked sailboats strewn about here can also be spotted on the waters of Accordo in footage and screenshots alike, further proving that we are indeed looking at a ruined version of the Lush Nation. Then, things get really bizarre as the dog enters through what looks to be a gateway or portal residing inside this boat. Let me remind you once again that this is a vision that King Regis is getting as an omen of things to come which is why this entire trailer has such a strange, dreamlike feel to it. So Noctis enters the sailboat and seamlessly transitions into a moving subway train. You can even see sand from the desert blowing in before the door closes. A cool little detail is the Gone Gold poster in the back, which was probably placed there to celebrate the fact that Final Fantasy XV officially went gold a few days ago on October 27th, 2016. And as Noctis looks around, it's possible to see that the train is filled with the all-purpose models of Niflheim's Magitech infantry, who don't seem to be paying much mind to Noctis. One way to interpret this portion of Regis's omen is that Noctis will often find himself amidst Niflheim's army, constantly having to go through them, or something along those lines. Now, what's really strange is that these mechanical soldiers are acting a little too human here. Some of them can be seen reading the newspaper, and others can be seen fiddling around with their smartphones. It just seems really bizarre and completely against their nature. But then again, the whole trailer is bizarre, so maybe it's not worth looking too deeply into? I also noticed some minor details like the posters on the wall. The one on the left looks like an ad for a job offer, but I can't really tell what the one on the right is. Some kind of artwork or a map, perhaps? If you have a better idea for what this could be and see any importance to it, let us know in the comments below. A few moments later, Noctis encounters his own reflection, only to find that on the other side of the mirror is actually Luna. 
Once again, there's this sense that Luna is always watching over Noctis wherever he goes. Another interpretation of this could be that while the fates of the two characters are very closely knit together, they will often find themselves worlds apart and unable to reach each other, like two people trapped on opposing sides of a mirror. This is quite appropriate when you consider how we have yet to see footage showing adult Noctis and Luna together in one place. It always feels like they're so far apart from each other despite being so close, and this shot pretty much summarizes that dynamic. This imagery also seems to showcase how these two characters are mirror images of each other. Male versus female, black clothes versus white clothes, dark hair versus blonde hair, brooding versus graceful, dark versus light, etc. Which is really interesting. I guess opposites do attract. Eventually, the subway train comes to a stop, and bizarrely enough, we see that Prina has already managed to get outside in the middle of even more Magitek infantry soldiers. Noctis gives chase, now finding himself outside of an outdoors train station, and once again, we are shown these mechanical soldiers acting way too human. One of them is even acting like a street vendor. It seems to me as though the Omen is showing us normal pedestrians represented as Niflheim soldiers for some reason. One possible interpretation could be that by showing us every square inch of these peaceful streets now overridden by Niflheim soldiers, the Omen is further foreshadowing the Niflheim Empire's conquest of the world and the oppression of its people. As Noctis makes his way through the crowd of Magitek infantry soldiers, they eventually start taking notice of Noctis and become hostile, which is when the trailer transitions into a scene showing us a bunch of staircases in all kinds of orientation, upside down, right side up, sideways, etc. Really weird. This is some crazy Inception shit right here. I think King Regis might be on shrooms or something. The way I interpret this shot is that there will often be times in his quest when Noctis will feel lost and overwhelmed, as if he's trapped in a maze and has no idea what to do. It's a feeling that I think will permeate from very early in the game. Starting with when he suddenly learns that his kingdom has fallen, that his father, the king, is dead, and that the crown of the kingdom and all the weight and responsibilities that come with it have suddenly been thrust upon him as the new king of Lucis. That's a lot to take in all at once, and it'll be interesting to see how Noctis deals with overwhelming situations like these and how the character develops as a result. Noctis continues to chase after Prina, while the Niflheim soldiers continue to give chase after him, and soon he's forced to fight his way through. The Doge eventually manages to reach this elevator, and Noctis, taking advantage of his teleportation powers, manages to get there in the nick of time before being overwhelmed. The way he chases after Prina amidst a sea of enemies also feels like it's describing another aspect to the kind of journey Noctis will be undertaking. My interpretation is that amidst overwhelming odds, he won't be alone and there will be someone there to help him push through in the same manner that we're seeing Prina guide Noctis through this crazy maze. And if we interpret Prina to be a representation of Luna, we could also interpret this as Luna being an important source of guidance for when Noctis is led astray. So, after they manage to get to safety, Prina's eyes flash orange, and the trailer once again takes us back to the scene, showing Noctis mercilessly attacking Luna as she barely struggles to fend him off. If we pause at the right time, it's possible to get a clearer look at the setting, which is engulfed in flames and rubble. Eventually, Luna is overwhelmed and her weapon trident is taken from her. The trailer then flashes back to Noctis, where we see the elevator disintegrate as the scene seamlessly transitions to a bridge where Niflheim soldiers have Noctis surrounded. Before long, a badass battle sequence unfolds, where we get to see Noctis seamlessly use a variety of weapons in fluid motion. He starts out by wielding dual short swords, then transitions into a large broadsword, and finishes his flurry of attacks by using fire magic, which are physical throwable objects in this game that you have to craft. The badassery continues as the trailer then seamlessly transitions into this battle against the behemoth. And check this out, is that blood I see? I don't remember seeing blood since the earliest trailers of Versus 13, so this right here might be indication that blood will be a feature in Final Fantasy 15. I know it's weird to make a big deal out of blood, but with what looks to be a more grounded and maybe even darker Final Fantasy game than past entries in the series, I think some depiction of blood might add to the game's overall presentation. But anyway, as the battle ensues, before long, Noctis is overwhelmed by the behemoth, and as he gets back up, if we freeze at the right moment, it's possible to see this giant mirror behind Prina. But instead of showing Noctis and Prina's reflection, it's actually showing Luna and Umbra, 
This reminds me a lot of that previous shot in the subway where we see Luna's reflection where Noctis' should be. I think we are once again seeing the mirror motif, showing how these two characters are mirror images of each other, as well as the kind of dynamic they'll have in the game. Always there for each other, but constantly out of reach, like two people trapped in opposing sides of a mirror trying to find their way back. Another cool way to look at this is that Noctis will have Prina, a representation of Luna, as a guide to help him find his way when he's led astray, whereas Luna will have Umbra, a representation of Noctis, as her guide to help her find her way when she's led astray. So in some ways, it's like they're always accompanying each other, even if they're separated. And you know, there are a ton of ways you could look at this, but I think the basic message here is that these two characters are very closely tied and connected to one another, like two sides of a coin, and even when split apart, are constantly striving to guide and find each other. I think that's what King Regis might be getting out of this part of the omen he's being shown. This is further represented as we see Noctis and Luna jumping towards the mirror and towards each other each with their respective dogs, Prina and Umbra, beside them. It's like watching two sides of a coin trying to meet each other. They're so close yet so far away. As the two jump in the mirror, the trailer once again does an awesome transition, this time taking us underwater. The camera then pans up to reveal Niflheim airships invading a cordo, and things are not looking good. This looks to be yet another premonition from Regis's vision, hinting at the possible demise of the nation. The trailer then transitions to a scene showing us Noctis inside a heavily fortified Niflheim base, perhaps the same one that we see in Final Fantasy XV's Space Infiltration gameplay trailer. Seeing no other option, Noctis pulls out one of his magical weapons, a lance, to get ready for battle, only for the weapon to disintegrate seconds later, possibly indicating that Noctis is slowly debilitating which forces him to use the enemy's guns against them. And for those wondering, yes, it's been confirmed that Noctis can use guns in this game. As Noctis battles his way through the platoon of soldiers, something that I noticed is this symbol engraved here. My guess is that this is the symbol of the Niflheim Empire. You can also spot similar looking symbols on the Magitek infantry, but the design is slightly different. Not sure what that means, but both symbols do seem to be related to Niflheim somehow. The battle eventually culminates to Prina making a run for it as a Magitek armor sets its target on the dog. Then, after a desperate struggle, Noctis eventually manages to subdue the mech. But to his misfortune, he was too late. Prina has succumbed to Niflheim's vicious attack. As Noctis runs towards the dog, the floor then opens up and swallows Noctis whole into a dark abyss. But before he can fall all the way through, time starts to rewind until Noctis is back on solid ground. Except now we see Noctis wielding Luna's trident while he's surrounded by a handful of Cerberus. It quickly becomes apparent that he's no longer at the base and has gone back to the scene of the crash, as can be noted by the car on the road and this tree, which was where Prina was standing before catching Noctis's attention prior to the crash. Except now it's nighttime and the whole area is ravaged. Noctis finally manages to prop himself up, but seems confused about his current predicament. He then sees Prina running away from him, only to realize that this wasn't Prina at all, but rather some kind of demonic dog disguised as Prina. We then see time rewind as we are shown that Noctis had somehow been tricked all along and led astray. And this finally starts to dawn on Noctis as he begins to realize and remember that it was him who killed his dear friend Luna. Horrified by his realization, Noctis tumbles to the ground and can do nothing but scream in terror as the dead bodies of Luna and Prina lay on the ground motionless. Pretty grim stuff. Now, before you cry spoiler, again, keep in mind that this is just a vision, so I wouldn't take this scene too literally if I were you. I don't actually think the final game will feature a scene in which Noctis literally stabs Luna with her own trident. I think this is just a vision or omen that King Regis is being shown that requires some interpretation. And my interpretation is that there might come a time in which Noctis will be led astray by someone he trusted as an ally, or become possessed by something that will lead to the demise of of some of his closest friends. Now, before we proceed, there are a couple more things I would like to point out. One, seeing Noctis and Luna battling reminds me a lot of the Versus 13 days, back when Stella still existed. If you recall, there was a point in one of the trailers in which we see Noctis and Stella about to face off against each other. This scene just kind of reminds me of that, and this might suggest that that aspect of Versus 13 might have been carried over somehow. 
2. This fiery setting reminds me of the intro to Final Fantasy XV, where we see Noctis and crew fighting against the demonic humanoid sitting on the throne who has been confirmed to be Ifrit. This makes me wonder if this fiery portion of King Regis's omen is somehow related to that inevitable battle. Could this mean that Ifrit is somehow involved in a plot to lead Noctis astray for whatever reason, and will all of this somehow culminate into the death of his childhood friend? Is Luna Nox Florette meant to be 15's Aerith? Can't say for sure. The thing about omens and premonitions in a fantasy setting, sometimes they come true, other times the heroes somehow manage to overcome a predetermined destiny to forge their own path towards the future, and other times these premonitions are completely misinterpreted or taken too literally. Any one of these is possible as far as I'm concerned, so the future is just very unclear at this point. But it's not looking good based on this omen. One last thing I would like to point out is that throughout this sequence, new dialogue can be heard, starting from when Noctis starts running towards the dead Prina after his battle against the Magitek armor and onwards. The voices once again belong to children, and here is what they say. And I'm the Chosen. Yes. It looks like this is the continuation of the dialogue we heard towards the beginning of the trailer. So the script of the whole conversation would look something like this. When organized as such, I think it's clear that the conversation is happening between Noctis and Luna as children. Luna begins by explaining about how the crystal's calling is to crown the King of Light, and that only the true king anointed by the crystal can purge the Scourge. Noctis responds by asking if he's the Chosen, and Luna replies, yes. Noctis then declares that he can do it, and that he won't let Luna down, to which Luna responds, I know you won't. Knowing the context of this conversation and hearing it play in the background while Noctis brutally assaults Luna makes this scene really tragic. We can only hope that King Regis's omen doesn't pan out the way it's being shown here. So after Noctis screams in terror after realizing what he's done, the trailer then flashes white and we hear the voice of King Regis saying, How many must die? before you are satisfied. Then, an unknown entity responds, I have seen many deaths, but now I'm only looking forward to one, and then I can rest. By this point, the scene comes into focus, and we see King Regis in front of what I can only assume to be Insomnia's crystal, which can also be seen briefly in Kingsglaive. As for who's talking to Regis, I'll share my theory once they finish their exchange, but I definitely get the feeling that the crystal is heavily tied to this dialogue, as well as the omen that Regis sees in this trailer. Anyway, Regis then responds with, He will take responsibility, you know. The voice then replies, As must we all. While the camera gives us an overhead view of the city of Insomnia, the camera then shows us King Regis making his way towards a balcony, and something that is immediately clear is that, at this point, even walking is a struggle for him. This is because his body has been rapidly degenerating over time as a result of having used the power of the crystal to maintain a magical barrier around the Kingdom of Lucis for so many years, which has been the only thing that has prevented the Kingdom of Lucis from being outright conquered by the Niflheim Empire. We can even see how King Regis needs some kind of contraption on his debilitated right leg to support his aging body. So after making it out to the balcony, Regis finally says, May the gods forgive me. After which the camera zooms out to give us a bird's eye view of the entire kingdom of Lucis, barrier active and all. Clearly this scene takes place sometime before the events of Kingsglaive, or at least before Niflheim manages to bring down the crystal's magic barrier. The trailer finally concludes as King Regis broodingly walks back into the building, none too happy about his current predicament, whatever they may be. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's try to analyze this little exchange between Regis and the ominous voice. The first question that comes to mind is who is King Regis talking to? I have two theories. One, he could be talking to the crystal directly. Perhaps the crystal has a mind and consciousness of its own and has the ability to exchange dialogue with those who wield the Ring of Lucy. 
two, he could be channeling the power of the crystal to talk to one of his ancestors residing within the Ring of Lucy. Notice how the ominous voice sounds very similar to the voices of past kings that can be heard in Kingsglaive when their spirits appear before Nyx Ulrich. You call upon the wards of this world's future, mortal. And if you come lusting for our power, you must first stand in our judgment. I have seen many deaths. But now I'm only looking forward to one, and then I can rest. So this could very well be that King Regis is speaking to one of the past kings of Lucis. Either that or again the crystal has a voice and consciousness of its own. As for what the two are talking about, first things first, it's important to recognize that it was most likely the voice that gave Regis the omen seen in the trailer. So their dialogue is probably in reference to that vision. Now with that in mind, my first impressions of this exchange is that King Regis is not all in control of whatever predicament he managed to find himself in. The one who's actually in control seems to be whoever the voice belongs to, whether it be the crystal or one of the past kings. And from Regis' first line, how many must die before you are satisfied? It looks like the voice is seeking some kind of satisfaction that comes at the cost of many lives. But something changed, whereas before the voice was satisfied with witnessing many deaths, now he's looking forward to only one. Is it referring to the death of Noctis or perhaps Luna as the omen seemed to indicate? Or maybe even King Regis himself? Hard to say for sure, but King Regis doesn't seem all too pleased with whatever the voice is planning, and it's almost as if he's being forced to go along with it. This is further evidenced by his last words, may the gods forgive me. King Regis seems like he's quite guilt-ridden about something, and one possibility I can think of is that it's because for whatever reason, he can't or won't do anything about the calamity that the omen foretold, perhaps because someone's got him under their thumb. This brings me to the theory of who I believe to be the true final boss of Final Fantasy XV. We already know it's not Ifrit, as confirmed by Final Fantasy XV director Hajime Tabata, and it'd be easy to assume that it might be Emperor Iadolus Aldercapt or Chancellor Arden Izunia, but I get the feeling that there is a higher power at play here. What if the source of the voice is the true main villain of the game? What if the final boss is actually one of the previous Kings of Lucis, or the crystal itself? And what if it's this entity that the voice belongs to, who has been keeping King Regis in check? I think that'd be a really cool twist, that the very thing that protected the Kingdom of Lucis all these years somehow ended up being the source of its calamity, and that there's some kind of ugly truth behind the crystal beyond what meets the eye. This is just wild speculation on my part, and I may be way off the mark. All I know is I have a really bad feeling about the voice. It's clearly a being with great power, but doesn't seem to care much about the greater good, and instead seems to be seeking to satisfy its own selfish needs and interests, even if it means the death of others. No entity with that kind of mentality can have anything good to contribute. So that about concludes my shot-by-shot -shot analysis of the trailer, but one more thing I'd like to point out is the way Noctis' appearance changes throughout the trailer. He starts out looking pretty fresh, but as he struggles his way through, you see him get beat up, his clothes start wearing down, he becomes debilitated, bruises and scars begin to develop, and the dude just gets more and more roughened up as the trailer goes on. I think this might be indicative of the kind of journey Noctis will have in 15. Things will start out relatively jovial, but as the game continues, I get the feeling that we'll see him go through some really tough struggles. As a result, I think the Noctis we see in later stages of the game will be very different from the one we see at the beginning, in the same manner that the Noctis we see at the end of the trailer is different from the one we see at the beginning. And also the game's prologue battle against Ifrit Hint as much, as we see a Noctis that looks older and more mature than the one we see at the beginning of the game. Alright, so the trailer eventually comes to an end, and that is all the information I've got for you guys, and with that, I would like to conclude this trailer analysis. Thank you for tuning in. Let us know in the comments below if I made any mistakes or if I missed anything. And I would also love to hear your own interpretations of the omen that King Regis is being shown by the mysterious voice. And to be further updated on all things Final Fantasy, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out. <laughs>